There's only one person right now who can stop us from going into what happened last fall, and that's Mike Johnson. He's cleaning the barn. That's obvious. So you want him to resign? You want him to resign? Yes. Yeah, I asked him to resign. What did he say? What did he, say? he said he would not. And then I said, well, you're the one who's going to put us into this. Because the motion is going to get called, okay? Does anybody doubt that? The motion will get called. And then he's going to lose more votes than Kevin McCarthy. And I have told him this in private, like, weeks ago. Marjorie Taylor Greene's bid to oust Speaker Mike Johnson just picked up a lot of momentum after one of her GOP colleagues, Thomas Massey, decided to co-sponsor her motion to vacate. And the goal now is to oust him while not plunging the House into chaos. But the question is, how exactly do you pull that off? Well, Massey explains via Twitter, quote, Johnson should pre-announce his resignation as Boner did. I think it's actually Boehner. My bad. Um, so... <laughs> So we can pick a new speaker without ever being without a GOP speaker. And in theory, this would allow Republicans frustrated with Johnson to support his ouster while not creating another embarrassing debacle for three weeks. And on top of that, if Johnson refuses to resign and it does turn into another embarrassing debacle, they can now blame Johnson for the chaos instead of themselves. But as Massey pointed out, Johnson is now refusing to resign and his response to that request is basically, uh, fuck no, I'm not going to resign. I'm not going anywhere. This is absurd. I am not resigning and it is, uh, it is in my view, an absurd notion that someone would bring a vacate motion. We are simply here trying to do our job. Um, it is not helpful to the cause. It is not helpful to the country. It is not help the House Republicans advance our agenda, which is in the best interest of the American people here. So at first he really played it cool, but you can tell now he's starting to get visibly frustrated with the individuals who are trying to oust him. But luckily for him, there are some gullible Democrats who are announcing their plan to swoop in and save him should he need their help. That includes individuals like Abigail Spanberger and Jared Moskowitz. Now, they're only willing to bail him out insofar as he's able to come through on aid for Ukraine and Israel because that's what they want. So if he gives them what they want, they'll give him what he wants in rescuing him. The problem is for individuals like Thomas Massey, Ukraine aid is a non-starter for him and Massey is in a position to kill any deal from Johnson that would appeal to Democrats, as this Fox News reporter points out. As I mentioned, Massey he sits on the powerful rules committee and you have to pass a rule before you can put a foreign aid package or anything on the House floor. You can only lose two Republicans because we expect all Democrats to vote against the rule. And now we have three Republicans so far that have said that they will not vote for the rule. It's essentially dead on arrival. So not only is the speakership um, in jeopardy, this foreign aid package that Speaker Johnson has presented a few hours ago, that's in jeopardy as well. In other words, Johnson is up shit creek without a paddle. And now Democrats are potentially in a position to take over the speakership if they stick together. And Massey and Green actually do follow through with their threat to oust him. Now, predictably, Marjorie Green is very, very happy to have the support of Thomas Massey. And she says there are others who are planning to support their campaign to remove Johnson as speaker as well. There are others behind us that haven't come public yet that also support it. Um, and I'm not sure that the Democrats are actually going to protect Mike Johnson if we have to have that vote. A week ago, I would say that she's embellishing or just straight up bluffing, but I actually do believe her. There is momentum ramping up, and I think a lot of that has to do with FISA. Now, she's really lucky to have somebody like Massey join her effort because it's clear that she really doesn't know what she's doing. So the general contention with Johnson among Republicans is Ukraine aid and another sticking point is FISA's renewal. But she made herself look so much more unserious by throwing in so many other demands that aren't even being debated by anyone else. Moving forward right now, we have a Republican elected Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who ran through Joe Biden's agenda, fully funded the Department of Justice, which has 91 federal indictments against President Trump, fully funded the FBI, which raided Mar-a-Lago, and he gave the FBI a brand new building. And even more than that, he fully funded Joe Biden's illegal invasion by fully funding the open border policies uh, that the Biden administration has implemented. Now he has passed through FISA and he stopped the warrant requirement with his own vote, the deciding vote. 
Now he's pushing for billions of dollars to go to Ukraine with a lot of dirty tricks happening here with this bill package that they're ramming and putting together and trying to trick Republicans to vote for with the Israeli aid package. What Speaker Johnson should be doing is he should be demanding that Chuck Schumer hold the trial in the Senate against Alejandro Mayorkas because the House impeached Mayorkas with my articles of impeachment. But Speaker Johnson is not demanding that. He also should be demanding that Joe Biden sign H.R. 2 into law. But Speaker Johnson is not demanding that. And the biggest thing he should demand is a citizenship requirement in federal elections. That should be passed through the House, passed through the Senate, and Joe Biden sign it into law. Or we move no legislation through the House. We should not vote on anything until we are making sure our elections are safe. I've got great news for Marjorie. You've already won this battle. Non-citizens are not allowed to vote. So the law that she wants passed is completely unnecessary. It's redundant. Furthermore, if they do bring Mayorkas impeachment vote to uh, the Senate floor, it's going to fail. So what is the point of prioritizing something that's going to fail and make demands around that? And I think it's because she's not necessarily motivated by policy. It's all virtue signaling to her. So she's really fortunate to have somebody like Thomas Massey on board, who's way more savvy than her. And it's really unfortunate for Mike Johnson, who's also kind of a dunce as well. And I say this because he actually does support the legislation that she's pushing for to make non-citizen voting illegal once again. But rather than hashing out the details with his own conference, he's trying to rally support for it by working with right-wing trolls on Twitter like DC Drano and end wokeness, as well as stochastic terrorists, libs of TikTok. And I guess the idea is that he thinks their endorsements will give him credibility among the GOP base and among his colleagues. But unless you're terminally online, nobody knows who the fuck these people are, right? I know who these people are. Odds are you know who these people are. But the general American base, Republicans, they don't know who these people are. So he's just so clueless and doesn't know how to get things done, which makes sense given how he never planned to be speaker in the first place and was kind of thrown into this position out of desperation by the GOP. But one thing that he does have going for him is that most Republicans are still totally against this move to oust him, including some pretty influential ones like Jim Jordan. What about the motion to vacate? Would no, you we shouldn't be. We don't need that. No way. No way. We don't we don't want that. We, we, can't, we shouldn't go through that again. I think the timing is would be pretty bad to have a change in, uh, in, in command, so I, I'm not really looking at that right now. It would be a terrible, terrible idea to vacate Speaker Johnson's speakership over what's coming up in the next few days. It would be a very bad idea. It would be a very bad idea for the Republican conference. It would be a very bad idea for the House of Representatives writ large and for the nation. So Johnson still has support. The problem is that it just takes one person— to privilege the motion to vacate and bring it to a floor. If Thomas Massey says tomorrow we're bringing this to a vote on the floor, it happens. So he can have all the support he wants. The problem is that's not going to stop this vote from taking place. Now, one thing that could potentially save his ass is buttering up to Trump. Now, it's going to be hard since Trump is distracted with his own trials and he's already pissed off with Johnson's support for FISA's renewal, but it doesn't necessarily seem like people in MAGA world are in favor of this move to oust him, at least for now. But I mean, he is on really thin ice, so whether or not he is going to remain speaker is yet to be seen. But either way, we should expect fireworks. Like, ousted or not, there's gonna be a lot of drama. And look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm here for it. I will reiterate the fact that I fully support the motion to vacate purely for entertainment value, and also because disarray within the GOP is objectively good for America. So give them hell, Massey and Marjorie. I'll cheer you on to the extent that you're facilitating your own destruction, and that's it. Excuse me. Vagina. Ha, 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 